Hello everyone, I'm here live again and today I'm going to make a mushroom greeting card in Procreate. So I'm going to create a new file and I create my greeting cards at 11 by 15 inches so that I can use them to make cards that are 7 by 5 inches but twice the size and add the bleed. Here I choose inches and I'll make 11 by 15 and I always work at 300 dpi so I can print my cards. I'm going to create that and now here I'm going to create my card. The blade is just like an extra half an inch on every side so I'm going to have that in mind and not make anything very close to the sides. I'm going to create a fast sketch here. So in the first layer, I'm just going to choose whatever brush you like to sketch with. I love using the Procreate 6B brush. It's here under sketching. This one, 6B pencil, and choose any color. And I like to create my sketch that way. So I want to create a birthday greeting card for my stationary line. Or I can also send this to my licensing partners and see if somebody picks it up. So I, I'm going to be very fast about this. And I want to create a little mushroom here. And I want a little toad standing on the mushroom. His legs. Uh, maybe he's holding some balloons. Uh, balloons that say happy. So I'm going to make five balloons. And then they'll all come here. And I'm making this a very quick sketch. Happy. Mm, I'm going to choose this selection here because I am. Sorry. I'm going to choose freehand here and select this part because I don't have space to write birthday there. So I'm just going to choose this, the selection arrow and bring this down. And now I'll have space to create like a banner that says birthday hmm. yes and then that's better and maybe he has a little birthday hat don't make things that touch exactly like this. That looks weird. So you want to make it either smaller like this or make it bigger. I think it's called tangents in design. And this makes it look better. Maybe it's too big. So let's try with a little a tiny hat. Maybe to the side. Huh, I don't like it. Mm. Yeah, I like that much better. And then this I'll make me make I'll maybe make smaller so it doesn't go down here. I'm going to erase these. And then I can make like some sort of ground here and some little leaves. And then I'm going to select the whole thing and kind of center it because see that this side has more space than this side. I want it to be centered. And the bleed will go like somewhat here. So the bleed is where you have like some extra image so that when they print it and cut it off, you don't get a wide area 
you still have color bleeding out and then the cut looks perfect. So if you're working for clients or a printing company, that might be required. Okay, I am going to make this very light. Just so I can barely see what I'm doing here. And now I'm going to start creating some layers underneath that sketch. So the first layer. Here I'm going to start creating the basic shapes. And I am using my, sorry, I'm using this brush called Oberon. Here, if you swipe to the left and you press find, it will show you where the brush is. So you'll have that brush in drawing and it's called Oberon. And I love that brush to create some shapes. So I'm going to be using that brush to create all my solid shapes today. Let's choose a color palette and uh, yeah, I think I'll be using my summer palette. So if you tap here, right now it's set to default, but if you tap one that's not set to default, you can set it to default. And what that does is that when you pull it out, it's the one that shows here. Sorry. It's the one that shows here. And when you select these other views here, you don't see them. But if you're here, that's the palette that shows underneath here. So I like pulling it out and having it here. It's better than coming in here every time to look for colors. I'm going to start creating the mushroom. So the stem will probably be this color. And it doesn't matter right now if you're making colors that, like if you're choosing colors that don't work, because for now we just want to make the shapes. So I'm following my sketch very loosely. And actually, if you want to use my sketch, just take a screenshot of this, and then you can add that screenshot to your app, to your Procreate, and you can work with me. I'm going to lower the opacity again. And I'm going to create another layer for the cap of the mushroom. make it a very traditionally red mushroom. And I need to create the part that goes under. So for that, I will create a new layer and drag it underneath. So it's underneath these two things. And for that, I'll make it a darker red. I need to close this shape if I want to drag my color into it. And because this brush is very textured, you might want to come in and like color in parts of those textures if you don't like it to be so textured. But if you like that effect, then just leave it like that. I'm just going to perfect this shape here. Yeah, that looks, be that looks better. Maybe I want to erase this little area here. Oh, that's too big of a brush. And then go back in with the brush and redraw that part. Yeah. And now I want to create the little froggy so I'm going to create another layer on top of the mushroom. And I'm going to paint him. Oh, 
sorry about that. I'm going to go in and paint this area so they don't have so much texture. And I'm going to go under the mushroom, sorry, under the frog and create a new layer where I'm going to create the back legs. And I'm going to do that with a darker green. and then go on top of the frog and create the front legs. I'm going to use this dark green and then I can change the color if I want. But for now, I'm going to create them like this. And I'm going to choose black and reduce the size of my brush, not so much, and make the face. Uh, maybe a little mouth here. Oh, that's great. I just realized this leg is not supposed to be there because it's going to be holding the balloons. So I'm just going to choose my eraser, erase it, and then with the green, just go back in and draw it here. I don't know. I'm going to select it. Drag three fingers down and cut and paste. And that will cut and paste that hand in its own layer. So now when I go here, I can drag it underneath the body because I think it looks better that way. I didn't like it on top. So that's a way you can separate things. Like separate the layers so you can change the order of things and see what works best for you. And here I'm going to go back to the layer where this leg is and I'm going to select it. And this time I'm not going to put it in a different layer. I'm just going to touch here and move it a bit. Because I think it looks better on this side if this hand is on this side. Yeah, that looks better. Now let's move on. Oh, in that layer I'm going to create the little party hat also. So let's make that one pink for now. And I want to give him some cheeks. And some white dots to the eyes. If you're creating characters, just experiment, making eyes different sizes, different positions, different shapes, until you find something that comes natural to you, and that way you'll develop your style. Now I'm going to create the balloons. So I'm going to create another layer, and I'm using a lot of layers. If your iPad doesn't have these many layers, sorry about my dogs again, if your iPad doesn't have these many layers, try to create as many layers as you can in one. For example, I could create the balloons in these layers, like I could create a balloon in this layer, another one in this one, and that way I would optimize the use of my layers. But I have uh, still more layers, so I'm going to create them in separate layers here. Because this one is the last balloon and I want this one to be on top, I'm going to start by drawing that one. Or I could even make them like this one and this one and this one are under these two. Or maybe on top of those two. Okay, 
So I'm going to start with the A and the P because those are going to be under the other balloons. And again, I'm going to just choose random colors for now. If you leave this pressed, it will create a perfect ellipse. So don't lift your pencil at the end and it will create the perfect circle. And if you tap here, you can tell it to make a perfect circle or you can keep it as an ellipse. And then in these blue dots, you can modify it. So that's really useful. And then I just want to drag a color in there. And uh, I'm going to color in a bit here because I don't want as much texture everywhere. And I'm just going to make another one here. So the balloons could be shades of pink and red. So maybe I'll choose this pink of this shade of pink for now. And again, don't lift your pencil at the end so that you create an ellipse. And oh, I'm going to create the little the little things here. So that one. If I want to choose this color again, I can come here and choose it, or I can press and leave my finger pressed, and then the color picker comes up, and then that color is selected. So that's a faster way of choosing colors that you have already used. And now I'm going to create another layer. And make these balloons. Mm -hmm. I don't have a teal color in my palette, so I'm going to go here and select one from here. Maybe use that one. I'm going to go to the ellipse and edit it and change the size a bit, make it rounder, and then drop the color in and create the little triangle. And then I'm going to choose a different color, maybe a lighter one here, and make the eye. And then I'm going to use the red, just because I like using each color at least two times in the painting. So if I have this red and it's the only place that has red, it might not match completely. Like it might be looking out of place. So I'm going to use it here again. And I'm going to edit it because I don't like it being so big. Great. I'm going to go to another layer. Actually, I'm going to do it here in the layer where I have the eyes. I'm just going to choose uh, this black and make this very thin and draw the strings. Oops, that one's not looking like it's going through the arm, the hand. And so it looks like he's holding it. I'm just going to take my eraser and erase this part here. Not so much. And now it looks like it's holding it. And now I'm going to create the banner. So I'm going to create a new layer and maybe the banner is going to be, hmm. let's make it this yellow for now, like an orange. And make sure the corners are closed because if they're not and you drop the color here, it's going to go to all the page. Especially when you're using these brushes that are so textured, sometimes they leave holes. Just 
just drop the color in. And now I'm going to create the base color here. So add a new layer and I'm going to drag it underneath everything. And uh, I'm going to try different things out. I'm going to make it larger. Select this green and I could have something like that or I could actually color the whole thing in. Yeah, I think that works. So I'm going to leave it like that. And I can give the background a color. So if you choose here, you can move this around and change the background color. So maybe like a blue. Hmm. I like this cream color, so I'm going to leave it like that. And because this is also cream, I'm going to have to add shadows to it to separate it from the background. So we'll do that after we finish adding the details here. I'm going to go on top of everything and I'm going to use the, the 6B pencil and add the lettering with it. So I'm going to choose that same cream background and see if that works. Make this bigger. And for this, this is just my handwriting. You can use a font if you're not comfortable handwriting. Just go here and add, add text. And then you can add an H for example, and make it bigger. And then rotate it. And that way, if you don't feel comfortable drawing, you don't have to. I'm going to make sure I'm still in my layer and I'm going to keep adding these. I always draw like this, but I'm trying to draw with my pencil to the side a bit so that you can actually see what I'm doing. So when I design like this, I design in different ways. So sometimes I have a brief from a client and they ask me what they need and then I design that for them. Sometimes I design something to put on my licensing portfolio and I send that to companies uh, to see if they want to license it. And sometimes I draw for my own line of stationery. So I have a line of stationery that I have just started and I am wholesaling it. So I would put this in my catalog and I, when I contact the stores, I would show them my catalog of cards and then they choose what they want to buy. Let's try this birthday with the same color. Mm, to me, if you're starting your stationary business and you're making cards, birthday cards are the ones that sell the most. And obviously greeting card, uh, Christmas cards and Christmas are the top sellers, but the rest of the year, birthday cards. And I have some blank cards where it's just like the illustration and it doesn't say anything. And those sell okay, but if you add a message, even happy birthday, those are even better. Happy birthday. Yeah. 
that looks okay. Now I want to add um, some white dots to the mushroom and I'm going to do it in the same layer. This is the traditional mushroom that everybody draws. I just find they're so pretty. Mushrooms are weird and interesting. I'm adding some of these dots overlapping the mushrooms. See, like they go out of the mushroom because usually they're like raised dots and I want to make like that appearance. Um, I want to simulate that appearance. Mm. Yeah, I think that looks good. So now I'm going to go to my first layer, which is the sketch, and turn it off. Sorry, I'm gonna drink some water. And here I'm seeing that this is too close to the border and here it's not. So I'm going to select all the layers by swiping to the right, except this one because this one's okay. And I'm going to grab them with this tool and move them a bit to the right. That's perfect. And now I'm going to use alpha lock. This is a mask. So I'm going to use alpha lock to add textures to these. Some people have very graphic styles, so this could be almost done for you if you have a graphic style. But if you like adding shadows and things like I do, then I'm going to show you how I do it. I'm going to start with the bottom layer and there's no specific order for this. And I'm just going to swipe right with two fingers and you see that this checkerboard appears. It means that that layer has alpha lock activated. I'm not gonna do it to the text. And what that means is, for example, if I'm in this frog and I am going to choose one of my watercolor brushes, if you want to download them for free, I have left the link in the description and uh, you can just sign up to my newsletter and you'll get this set for free. This is the set I use the most for my commercial work. So I'm going to use my Ultimate Feel Rough brush but feel free to use any other brush you want. And I'm going to show you, I'm in the frog. Sorry, my palette moved. So if I draw like this, it will only draw inside the frog. So this is super useful for shading. And I like to start in order. So I'm going to go from the back of the mushroom. And I'm going to show you, if I use a lighter color, I can also brighten areas and if I use a darker color, I can make shadows. So this is the effect that this brush creates. It has some sort of texture and if I press harder, I get a darker color and if I press softer, it's like adding water to watercolors. So I'm just lightening that up so that it looks like dark inside but not everywhere. And then I'm going to go to the, how do you call that, the stem? I'm just going to add some shadows here. Especially now that it's the same color as the background, I really need to add shadows to make it differ differentiate from it. And I can also choose like this color, for example, and add unexpected shadow colors. I like doing that in traditional watercolors, just adding a weird color, and I think it works. Mm. I'm going to add a bit more color here, so I'm just going to cover it all basically. And I need some shadow from the mushroom. So I'm going to choose maybe this color. 
and you can use it like that or like if you want like a black but you don't want it to be so dark you can just reduce the opacity and sorry that's still very dark and then press softly and add a shadow like that hmm. but i don't like it <laughs> so i'm going to try maybe with the same brown and go here and darken it a bit and then add a shadow like that yep i like that much better now I'm going to go to the mushroom top and go back to this palette and then choose a darker red and then add some shadows here. And I'm pressing softly at the end so that it kind of like blends it in. And I'm just adding some shadow here so it looks like it's not flat. See, it looks like it's got a leap that goes underneath. You can also add shadows under... That's too big. Under these things, I'm going to choose a darker color and maybe add some shadows like this. So they actually look like they're, they belong there and they're not just floating. Can add a shadow under his hand and the little leg and even the whole body. And these are little details that you can add or not, like it's up to you. Again, it all depends on your style. Now let's do the little froggy legs. And I'm choosing a darker green and just adding a tiny bit of shadow here. Oh. And the hand. I'm not sure. Maybe I'll just make the hand the same color. So. When I'm on this layer, I'm going to tap here and like leave my finger pressed and then the color picker will come up and then I can tap on it and choose fill layer. Oh, that was this hand. Great. I can do the same to this one. If I choose fill layer, it will fill the whole layer. So this arm is with all these other things. So if I choose fill layer, it's going to fill everything and I don't want that. So what I can do is just select this and then I could paint it with the Auburn brush again. Yeah, that works. And then deselect that. And I'm going to, to change to my Ultimate Fill Rough brush again and then add some shadows. So again, I need to select that dark green and maybe I'll just add some shadows on the sides so you don't see where it's starting. Let's do it like this. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to choose that color. No, nope. that didn't work. Um, I don't like how it looks like. like this indentation here. So I'm just going to color this part a bit more. Yeah, that looks better, I think. And then I can go to this hand and make a shadow here, like it's coming from the back of the body. And here, with a darker color underneath the hand, so that it gives you more that effect that it's holding it. And 
then this froggy head. I'm going to make a very big brush and just maybe add some texture here. And if you go to the watercolor set, if you have that one, there's a water bleed brush and you can use this to soften the transitions. It's like adding water to real watercolors. I'm going to go to this arm and turn off the alpha lock so I can use this tool, which is the smudge tool. And I'm going to smudge this in like this. So that it kind of blends into the body. So I'm going back and forth. Blending it like this so it doesn't show where the arm starts. Yeah, that's better. Now I'm going to go back to the body and add some shadows in the eyes. Oh, I have the water blend selected. I'm going to select the ultimate feel rough again and add some shadows in the eyes. Maybe a shadow for the cat. Yep. And now we move on. This one doesn't have alpha lock, so I'm going to turn it on again. And I'm going to paint the little hat, maybe Add some pink dots. And maybe some yellow, so we incorporate it here. Well, I like that. And now we go to the balloons. So the balloons, I'm just going to choose a darker color than they are and make this very big and just add a tiny bit of shadows here, like to the middle of the balloon. Maybe a little bit on top. And same for this one, choose a darker color. And then do the same for these ones. Select this color and go here and then darken it. Great, and then the banner. So for the banner, I'll add some red. And that's it. Oh, we are missing the grass. So I'm going to go to the grass and I'm going to turn alpha lock on it and choose a darker green. And maybe add some darker areas here. The shadow of the mushroom. And then maybe some textures, some details, just so it's not so plain. I don't know, my style is very uh, packed, I would say, like I like everything to be full. I don't like white spaces a lot. And I just realized I didn't do anything to this middle balloon, so I'm going to go back there and choose a darker color. It must be my Latin upbringing, like everything's so full and colorful that, I don't know, that's what I like. Once I had an agent tell me my work was too bright and looked Latin and I'm like, yeah, because I am. I was born in Colombia, lived in Colombia most of my life. So the places where you live or visit definitely influence your style. I'm just going to go here to my recent brushes and I'm going to use my 6B pencil. You will see mine says modified. It's because I tapped on it and I went and I started changing things here just so I could change a bit uh, the way it works. But it's basically the 6B pencil that you can find in Procreate. I'm just going to use it to add some little details to finalize this illustration. 
So I want to add some lines to this because again, it's a very blank image. So I'm going to go there and choose maybe a darker color and I'm going to add some lines. And I'm pressing softly in some of them and then harder in the other. Maybe some holes. I don't know, some mushrooms have some little imperfections, like little tiny holes, and I love them. Yeah, see? To me, that looks way more interesting than it did before. And you could even add a new layer. I don't know. I haven't thought of these, but things come to mind as I draw. And you could even add like a little face to it. I'm gonna make the eyes bigger. I don't know, what do you think? I'm going to add white dots here. And maybe pink cheeks. Oh, now I'm torn. I kind of like it. The good thing about making it in another layer is that you can turn it off and on so you can see like without it, with it. And uh, you can also move it around. So like, oh, maybe there it looks better. Oh, definitely. I'm going to keep it. Uh, I'm going to see if I can see the chat. <laughs> see if somebody's chat is something. If you're there, let me know if I should keep it or not. Okay. Mm, now I'm going to go... Do we need more textures and details in the mushroom cap? Oh, I think we definitely need underneath. So I'm going to go underneath and I'm going to choose this red just because it's so dark. And I'm going to make very thin lines which is not this. I need to make my brush smaller because I'm pressing like this so it makes the brush thicker. If I was drawing like this, those are the lines I want. So maybe I'll just do this and you guys are going to imagine that you're seeing everything in my brush perfectly. Oh, that actually looks okay. I like that. So now uh, then we have the legs and that doesn't need anything else. Then we have this hand. I might just select this dark green and add a little line here just to make it even more visible that it's holding this. Now we have the frog and I want to add some little details to it. I don't know. I'm just testing things out here. Like It's a lot like this when I draw. Oh, and when I draw for myself, I turn this constantly. Like I turn the canvas constantly so it's easier for my hand than just turning my hand. But if I'm doing this and you guys are watching, then it will just make you dizzy. So, I don't know. Let's try this. Like, as if it has like that under part of the frog. Oh, I like it. I'm going to go to the hands now. And maybe add this light and then this dark here so you can really see that there's a hand there and I kind of like this effect that it shows like light is hitting on it so I'm going to do the same to the back legs and the other hand so I'm going to go back choose this light light green and add some to the border here I'm trying to be as organized as possible and like 
work in order in the layers but uh, this is how it goes not everything is planned and you have to make design choices as you go so don't be scared if you have a plan and then it doesn't work just oh maybe i'll do this oh yeah that's better yep just adapt and have fun nobody's going to know what it was supposed to look like only you so So if at the end you come out with something different than you planned, it doesn't matter. Unless you're following a very specific brief and then you actually have to adapt to what the client wants. Okay. I'm going to go to this and I'm going to add some more dots here. And I want to create a different layer here to add the pom-pom. And I might try this color and see what happens. Hmm, that's too light. You can't see it. So I'm just going to choose this blue and create the pom-pom. Oh, but it's underneath the banner. So I want to drag it up. Just press it and drag it up. And this way we're going to be able to see it overlap. No, that's cute. Uh, I'm going to try a border here. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I'll just leave the border. I think it looks like it belongs. Okay, great. Now we go to the balloons. And you can add more details to the balloons if you want, so you can give them some polka dots just to add variety to them. And this one, maybe you can add some lines. And then we go to these ones and I'm going to choose a lighter color here. And, uh, you can make larger polka dots. We can, what should we add to this one? We can add little hearts. This red one can have horizontal lines. Yep. And finally, the banner. Mm. I'm going to go to this layer and select just the birthday and drag three fingers down and I'm going to duplicate it. So now I'll have a birthday just in a different layer and I'm going to drag it underneath I'm going to turn on the alpha lock if it works. Yep. And I'm going to choose a dark red color and fill the layer. And right now you don't see it, but if I move it down a bit, it'll create like a shadow. And I like that. And finally, I think the background needs a bit of work. So I'm going to add some little bit of grasses here. So on top of everything, just select this color. And I'm going to add some grass. And I think just that like makes it like come together and then I am going to create some how do you call that in English in Spanish it's serpentinas like those things that are like that and you blow them on they're like paper so I'm going to try some of those 
Streamers. Oh, yeah. Now I remember. And these are confetti. So I'm just going to choose colors from the illustration and add those things. So more confetti. Maybe a different streamer here. And then some blue. And then another one of these here. And then one last thing I like to do is on top of every layer, on top of all the layers, I create a new layer and I do this with a yellowish color, any yellowish color, and I cover everything. And then I go here to the opacity and I like either color burn or multiply and I reduce the opacity a lot. And you can barely see the difference. See? But it kind of unifies all the colors. So if your colors are not matching, you can do these. And it will make them belong a bit more together. And this is it. Now our grading card is done. And if you follow me on social media, I'll show you how it looks when it's printed. So make sure to subscribe and let me know if you like these lives and what you want me to show you. And thanks for being here. Bye.